Why bother with the humanities? Some students enter a humanities class doubting the benefits of studying things like literature, art, religion, or philosophy. You may even be one of those students, possibly influenced by a cultural shift within the last few decades that has emphasized STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math fields as better for employability and future job security. Along with this emphasis on STEM fields, there has been a cultural devaluation of the humanities. Comments like what are you going to do with a degree in art? In English? In philosophy? Have become common even though the humanities remain largely responsible for much of our leisure time entertainment and play major roles in expressing national identities and specific cultures. Furthermore, these questions persist even as those trained in the humanities have remained employable and are important contributors in workplaces. Despite the tendency to de-emphasize the humanities in education as useful for job placement, studying them has important benefits, which generally fall into three camps. Self-development, developing an understanding of the greater human story to find one's place within it. Skills development, acquiring transferable skills useful in any workplace. Seeing the big picture, developing the ability to see the big picture of human, activity across time and cultures, and the interconnected contexts out of which new human history, creations, phenomena, and identities emerge. Let's examine each of these in some detail. The humanities as self-development. First, studying the humanities benefits the self. This is the traditional approach taken by liberal arts programs to explain why the humanities are important, so we will begin our discussions here. If you think about it, most people participate in the humanities in some way or another, and it's often fun. If you have ever enjoyed listening to music, reading a novel, watching a film or play, watching a comedian perform or an improv show, visiting a museum, watching ASMR YouTube videos, using an Apple device, or playing video games, you have gotten enjoyment from the humanities. You have appreciated and interacted with creators' storytelling skills, artistic and aesthetic decisions, and creative approaches to communicating with fellow human beings in narrative and visual forms. You have appreciated the expressions of performing, visual, and literary arts such as music, dance, theater, art, film, and literature. Other than consuming things created by others, you may also be a creator. If you have ever retold a family story that may or may not be true with your own spin, written a poem, short story or song lyrics, played an instrument, sang in a choir at a church, danced in a recital or on a dance floor, created TikTok makeup tutorial videos, communicated with memes or emojis, done your own advanced manicure, created your own unique fashion sense, documented information about local history on a blog, or explored your own family tree, then you have been a creator in the humanities. Furthermore, you likely increased your own self-awareness and sense of who you are in the process of creating. There are also fields in the humanities like philosophy and religious studies that not only express what it means to be human, but that also go further towards the goal of self-knowledge by reflecting and exploring the peculiarities of the human condition in detail. If you have ever thought deeply or had profound conversations about what it means to be a human being, ethical decisions, the relationship between humans and the divine, why some people worship differently than others, how we gain knowledge, or what the purpose of life is, then you have wrestled with the kinds of reflective questions explored in these fields. While we all might have explored the humanities on our own, this class will take a step further and introduce you to the process of formally studying the humanities to discover the many different perspectives humans take in these fields so you can situation your own approaches within the larger picture. And this is where the idealistic goal of understanding ourselves in connection with something bigger, but perhaps unnameable, comes in. In exploring the art, thinking, religious traditions, writing and performances of others across time and cultures, we can gain a self-awareness, a wide-awake mode of being in the world. Thus, the humanities bring us closer to the mystery of consciousness, to everything we sense as real but can't always quantify. In studying the humanities, we gain an impression of the larger human story in all its complexity in which we are each embedded. 
Santiago Ramos contends that the humanities can be studied for their own sake instead of as something to sell for a salary, noting that they can even build up the soul. Indirectly and over the period of a lifetime which is often part of a spiritual birth or a political awakening. Thus studying the humanities can inspire personal transformations that can lay the groundwork for a gradual cultural transformation where utility is not the only source of value. As someone learns about themselves, new self-knowledge can influence their priorities and impact how they function in the world, eventually impacting the world around them. And, here we see a more developed idealistic purpose of studying the humanities. One studies the humanities to become a better person, and to be in the position to help create a better world. The humanities as skills development. While there is a strongly idealistic streak among those who defend the humanities as an essential part of a well-rounded education, on a practical level, their study also helps students develop and enhance many transferable skills for today's workplace. Students can practice skills like communication, creativity, critical thinking, cultural responsiveness and awareness, and emotional intelligence by studying the humanities. For instance, writing essays and arguing for a specific perspective in a philosophy class helps students hone communication and critical thinking skills. Learning about the history of art and closely examining artistic productions from around the world inspires creativity. Seeking to understand different religious traditions and worldviews fosters the development of emotional intelligence and cultural responsiveness. Critical thinking is one of the most discussed skills for those who promote the humanities as an essential part of educating students for the workplace, and this is a skill that many employers highly value. One study shows that employers link critical thinking to the capacity to avoid mistakes and make right decisions, the capacity to correct and regulate oneself, and social responsibility. A report from the American Philosophical Association notes that critical thinking is the process of purposeful, self-regulatory judgment, attending to the evidential conceptual, methodological, criteria related, or contextual consideration upon which that judgment is based. So to develop the skill of critical thinking, particularly the kind valued by employers, one would need to practice making judgments and decisions, expand their knowledge of the world and decision-making methods, and understand oneself. Students can develop all three of these ingredients of critical thinking through the intellectual and reflective study of the humanities. For instance, assessing what makes a good or compelling piece of art, or performance and supporting that assessment in the field of art history, or theater helps a student learn how to make decisions and back them up. Learning about different approaches to solving ethical dilemmas in philosophy expands student knowledge of decision-making methods and provides them with a framework for being socially responsible. And, learning in religious studies about different religions of the world and assessing where one's belief system and approach to living falls within that greater context helps students expand their knowledge of the world and understand themselves. Engaging in these types of studies can result in flexibility open-mindedness, truth-seeking and cognitive maturity to help someone be more successful at their job. Furthermore, someone trained in the humanities can bring qualities beyond transferable skills to jobs like healthcare and cybersecurity by having a fuller understanding of how the human condition impacts these fields. These two occupations in practice have deal with the ways humans think and experience the world which can be neglected in favor of technological scientific or monetized priorities, so studying the humanities can provide an antidote through the different perspectives it brings. For instance, one oncologist recounts that after reading and discussing a fictional story about a woman dying of ovarian cancer, he started spending more time with his terminal patients, despite pervasive business guidelines that limit the time doctors should spend with patients. Learning only the statistics of ovarian cancer without the human story behind those statistics might not have resulted in a behavior change on the job. Thus, we can see how studying the humanities has the potential to rehumanize healthcare in the face of practices that tend to dehumanize it. Those in the field of cybersecurity, too, can develop valuable insights through the humanities. 
For instance, Trevor Morgan argues that literature and fluency in coding need not be exclusive since literary character analysis can prove to be a useful tool for very important aspects of software development, such as the user experience, human workflow design, and even boardroom politics. Morgan notes that since humans made technology, for other humans, a deep understanding of human intellectual and emotional processes, actions and reactions is essential for programmers to make sense of the user experience and figure out those who launch cyber attacks. He even thinks that the humanities are the best field for technology developers to gain this kind of knowledge. The humanities as seeing the big picture. Thus far, we have seen how the study of the humanities can benefit the self and enhance one's capacities in the workplace. The third and final benefit of studying the humanities, developing a keen capacity to see the bigger picture of humanity, resembles the first benefit because those who engage in the depth of study needed for this kind of knowledge often study the humanities for their own sake. Those who engage in this kind of details study are often people interested in advanced study of specific fields within the humanities or in the interdisciplinary study of the humanities as a whole. What is significant here is that these experts do not only focus on gaining more knowledge of themselves through studying the humanities. They focus on gaining enough comprehensive knowledge about what it means to be human so that they can effectively contextualize human, creative activities within larger historical and cultural context and see their interconnectedness of human activities in ways those without such training cannot. Here is where you will find those with doctorates in literature, philosophy, religious studies, history, languages, art history, and theater. These experts have comprehensive overviews of their fields and definitive subspecialties within those overviews. They are often, but not always, those who educate others about the humanities. People with advanced degrees in humanities fields can also work for think tanks, the government, or businesses. With their extensive knowledge bases, they can effectively analyze cultural trends and historical trajectories within broader frameworks. These experts see the bigger picture of human activity and can better contextualize present situations to show how they are parts of repeating human patterns throughout history. A skill like this could be useful, for instance, for predicting how religious extremists will respond to specific interventions, or for explaining creative reactions in the arts to patterns of oppression and prejudice in a society, or for decoding the way specific groups seek to influence others through disinformation and propaganda contained in the arts and media. Other than the traditional humanities fields, newer subfields of study have evolved in the last 50 years in response to societal changes. Because the basic fields of the humanities are essentially dedicated to cultural analysis and can provide students with a critical framework to identify discrimination and inequality in the world, humanities ended up being the appropriate place for these subfields to develop. For instance, the realities of race, power, and privilege often come up in humanities studies, and thus African American studies, Native American studies, and women's studies programs emerged in the 1970s. More recently, we have seen the development of disability studies, ethnic studies and LGBTQ studies. These newer subfields are responses to more recent societal developments. Disability studies majors can go on to law or medical school with a fuller cultural understanding of the complexities of what being disabled means and work for disability rights. Ethnic studies combines African American, Asian American, Latino, and Native American studies, focusing on the struggle for social justice for all people. Those in this field may go on to social, law, medicine, or public service. Teachers in K-12 education might also take ethnic studies minors alongside their teaching programs to understand better their students' cultural and historical backgrounds. Those in LGBTQ plus studies may go on to work in social service sectors, medicine or government with a greater understanding of the needs of the LGBTQ plus population. Programs like these provide practitioners in other fields with backgrounds to understand specific populations, and they can help create more equitable workplaces and society 
as more people gain knowledge about the needs of specific populations and how our present situations have evolved from our past ones. Perhaps, then, it is necessary and even crucial to bother with the humanities. It is important to know who we humans, in our creativity, diversity and presence, are as individuals and groups, and who others are within their cultural, societal, historical, and geographical contexts. If we want to coexist with others, explain why we have difficulties coexisting, or work towards mutual understanding, knowledge of others is essential. And, there are few other fields of study, that can as comprehensively contextualize, and provide insight into the complexities of being human as effectively, as the humanities can.